Hello and welcome to Helio Skin Hair and Laser Clinic. Being the month of PCOS awareness, we have taken the initiative to create an awareness about PCOS and all that one needs to know about this particular syndrome. So today I have with me Dr. Madhumita who is going to be talking and sharing insights about acne, something that all of us have experienced at some point in time. Some of us are still experiencing and are not aware how to deal with it. So let me now welcome Dr. Madhumita. Hello doctor. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? I'm doing good. Thank you. So um, this is the month of PCOS uh, awareness and acne is something which is very closely related to PCOS. So let's talk about acne doctor. So I believe there are different types of acne so can you tell us a little more about that so uh, acne comes in different stages actually so basically it starts with a white head or black head which we call in medical terms as comedones open comedones and closed comedones which in common or colloquial term they call it as white head or black head that is mainly because of the occlusion and when there is some occlusion there is the chance of some bacterial proliferation within that occlusion. So that is the time when you get the second, third or the fourth stage of pimples that is something called papule which will look like a reddish lesion which might change to a pustule where the same lesion can have pus. And the last stage is the nodulocystic acne which is painful with uh, painful nodules that is like you have thicker lesions. Uh, the depth is more, in nodule the depth is more, that's why the pain is there, it's very deep seated and there can be formation of cysts also. So treatment also varies according to the type of acne. So doctor, um, normally acne, uh, in the, the first experience that one has with acne is during the puberty time. So um, why does that happen and uh, um, you know, can you tell us because the children I mean, nowadays puberty happens very early and, uh, you know, they tend to, you know, pinch it or, you know, uh, scratch and all that. So, so if you can give us a little more insight into how to deal with those at that early stage, I'm sure it will be useful for our audience. Yeah, sure. Acne is much related with hormones. So, hormones are something which stimulate the sebaceous gland. Sebaceous glands are nothing but the glands which secrete the sebum. So when there is occlusion of the sebum, there is uh, formation of comedones along with some uh, debris which we call as keratin debris. So within that, when the bacterial proliferation happens, that leads to a larger pimple. So why does it uh, happen mostly during puberty? It's mainly because of the hormonal fluctuations and there is um, uh, influence of the hormones on the sebaceous glands. So basically in the sebaceous glands if we see, they are formed even at birth, but they get matured at that age and that's why they develop pimples at that stage. And more and most of the times we see a different pattern of acne in different people. So when it comes to young age, uh, when it's completely not hormonal, they can have acne on all over the face. Whereas when it's related to PCOS and when it's related to completely hormonal and when there are no other factors associating with it, then they'll have acne lesions or pimples predominantly on the lower half of the face. And in such patients, you can also see unwanted excessive hair growth on that region. So in that case, it's related to PCOS where they'll not have regular periods and they are, like they'll be so much overweight and there will be excessive hair over the lower half of the face. So that was my next question to you, Doctor. Uh, is PCOS and uh, acne directly related? I mean, is uh, acne an outcome of uh, PCOS or do, do people who have more acne, uh, you know, tend to get PCOS at some point in time? So, acne is one of the things which you can identify from outside that the patient is having PCOS. But then, as I said, Patients with PCOS will have predominantly on the lower half of the face. So, and there will be a typical history. The patient will be telling, I have acne all over the month, but there is sudden flare up in and around my menstrual period. So that is the sign that they have uh, PCOS influence of acne. So in that patients, the treatment will be a little bit different. 
Okay. So, um, people get uh, uh, acne around their neck, around their chest and back mm -hmm. also. Is it the same doctor and is the treatment also the same? So, there is something called trunkal acne or something which they can develop all over the back and the front of the chest and the upper part of the arms also. But a similar condition, there is one more thing which is called seborrheic dermatitis uh, where there is uh, pimple like lesions which we call as seborrheic folliculitis mm -hmm. which also can develop on the chest, upper back and the uh, shoulders everywhere. So when you see this seborrheic dermatitis is confined to the area on the back in the interscapular region that is between the scapular bones it's in the middle of the back. So that is the site where the uh, fungus which is responsible for the dandruff has its effect. So wherever there is excess sebum secretion, there will be folliculitis like lesions. So truncal acne is different, seborrheic dermatitis, seborrheic folliculitis is different. Uh, and most of the times the seborrheic folliculitis uh, is mainly because of the dandruff component where the treatment is more or less same but the method to approach it is different and the initial treatment would be different. So, um, uh, Doctor, apart from treatments, you know, like you have very clearly mentioned why these, uh, you know, acnes come about. Uh, does diet and lifestyle play a role in, you know, I wouldn't say preventing, probably controlling the breakouts? Yeah, the diet is like uh, very much important in controlling acne as, and also to prevent it after achieving or uh, clear skin with medications have to be meet a doctor also. So many people think that uh, oil, like having oily foods and uh, that is di directly related to acne. But more than that, the real culprit is sugar. Mm -hmm. So when you have excess sweet and sugar and uh, milk and milk related products and all those ready-made proteins which they take when they go for gym, especially the whey protein is much related. So there is something called insulin-like growth factor. So when they take these processed foods or something with excess sugar, these products stimulate the formation of insulin-like growth factor which has a high tendency to go and stimulate the sebaceous glands and then results in acne. So no matter if they are on treatment or off treatment, diet modification is very important for acne. They will visibly see very good results just with diet modification. I'm sure doctor because diet modification and following a, a you know good healthy diet I think definitely plays a role not just with acne but overall health. Now having said that uh, doctor uh, you made a mention of whey protein and uh, these protein mix that are available off the shelf. Similarly there are a lot of cosmetic based products that claim to uh, help with the reduction of acne and you know sometimes even the scarring of the acne can be removed. So are these products really useful? Do they really work? So nowadays we see a lot of over-the-counter products even chemical peels are uh, sold as over-the-counter products. So when you see as a doctor what I use in my clinic the chemical peels if you see the pH will be very less that is less than one it's highly acidic. Only a doctor that also a trained person can handle those peels. So the over-the-counter products when you see the pH will be uh, like very high. It will be in the borderline between the acidic and the alkaline say pH 4 or 5 something like that. So even with that we also get patients who have used those over-the-counter products though it is not that acidic though the company or something claims that it's safe we get patients who have developed side effects with that. So without complete knowledge of that, you are not supposed to use. Especially the AHA, BHA products, it is the salicylic acid, glycolic acid or lactic acid. You have to be very careful when you are using it. So first you have to know what your skin type is and what is suitable for your skin. And sometimes it comes, like you are not supposed to combine two products on the same day or at the same time. That's what we call as uh, actives. Say example, vitamin C and retinol, it's claimed that we are not supposed to use during the same time. So patients have to have a, a good knowledge about what they are using. I would suggest them before they start to use anything on their skin, 
let them consult a dermatologist, a board certified person and then get a counselling and then they can start it. I wouldn't suggest the over-the-counter products because most of the times people are not aware, they are just uh, they just wanted to try the hyped product over the internet. I'm sure doctor, I mean, uh, I think it's a good habit to develop to read the ingredients, although I don't know how much of the ingredients will make sense to a lay person. But like you rightly said, it is always, uh, you know, best to consult an expert because uh, that is the authority. And uh, if an expert can suggest what, what uh, uh, is good for you on your skin, I don't think you should have a doubt in picking up that particular product. So, um, uh, Dr. We were talking about uh, using products. So now, uh, sometimes uh, acne leaves a scar on the face or you know sometimes even on the body so are those scars treatable and why do they leave a scar in the first place so when it's a superficial acne that's when it's in the papule stage most of them leave with a scar like a pigmentation so there's something called acne excoriate usually the acne will leave a light or dark brownish pigmentation when it heals there's something called this acne excoriate where the patient manipulates the pimple a lot so that will add to additional injury to the pimple which will lead to a very dark brownish pigmentation or even a blackish pigmentation and the other one is if the depth of the acne is too much then let's say something if it was a nodule then during the healing process there will be destruction of the collagen and there will be disorganization of the normal collagen which is there in your skin so that will lead to an atrophic scar where it will form a little bit down slight bulge on your skin where the disorganized collagen this is your normal skin whereas the disorganized collagen is pulling your skin from below so it depends the treatment depends on what type of scar you have one thing if you want to prevent excessive scarring please do not manipulate your pimples please do not pinch it please do not try to evacuate the pus for yourself so when it is just a pigmentation, we can start with a proper sunscreen and also depigmenting creams. But also we can go for Q-switch laser which targets the melanin. So when it comes to the atrophic scar, nothing works topically. We have to go for procedures because in this procedure, we have to break down the disorganized collagen which is causing the pull. So there are so many procedures like succession, fractional CO2, pixel RF technology, all those things break down this pulling collagen, this organized one and then slowly new collagen will be formed according to this and then you are, we can resurface your skin again it will take multiple sessions it's difficult to achieve with a single session um, I'm sure doctor with, with so much of uh, treatments available now everybody can have a good skin as you rightly said do not manipulate your acne uh, so having a uh, you know, spoken about acne so much, doctor. There's one a uh, question I'd like to ask. Uh, you know, probably I'm being a little biased, being a woman. Uh, why is it that you know women tend to have acne? You know, almost throughout their life, whereas for men it's just a you know a, a period, and then they don't get acne at all. That's very unfair. Yeah, we also notice that in our daily clinical practice. So as I said, acne has much hormonal influence. And it's related to mainly related to PCOS. So in men, we don't see after a particular age. That's because of uh, they don't have much hormonal fluctuations like us. They tend to have much hair loss, which is hormonal, the androgenetic alopecia. And here in females, it's mostly mainly see as during the puberty, and also some tend to get a flare up during pregnancy, and or the entire adolescent age when there is too much of hormone fluctuation and we also see women who never had acne in their teenage or adolescent age and also not even during their pregnancy but at menopausal age they get that's something called adult onset acne so nowadays we are seeing that very commonly it's mainly because of the hormonal fluctuation which is aggravated by diet okay so does stress also cause uh, outbreaks doctor definitely uh, like it's an added point which can aggravate the existing acne so again when there is too much of stress your body will produce stress hormones that has influence on acne as well okay so um, doctor you were mentioning about uh, uh, adult uh, 
uh, acne outbreak during menopause so uh, men also go through something like a menopause right so even then uh, nothing happens to them so that is because mainly in acne the female hormones are implicated especially the estrogen's effect whereas in men the estrogen effect is not that so it's like um in females the estrogen hormones are formed from male hormone it's derived from the male hormone in the peripheral fat whereas in males do not have estrogens so since they don't have estrogen the female hormone they don't have the influence of the hormonal acne uh and the hair fall which they have which is hormonal is mainly because of the male hormone which is the active form dihydrotestosterone which is derived from the testosterone okay so i i mean dr madhu has uh, used a lot of medical terms which is not uh, very unfamiliar to all of us hormone is something that we all talk about and uh, whatever uh, dr madhumita has shared with us today i'm sure is going to be very very useful so doctor uh, finally talking about uh, acne and being the pcos awareness month uh, as a doctor as a dermatologist what is it that you would like to tell our audience especially the young ones who are in the adolescent you know facing a lot of acne because i think the appearance can also have an impact on the psychology and i mean psychological and the emotional uh, level of a person so as a dermatologist as an expert what is it that you would like to tell them first thing i would like to tell something is that acne is treatable don't think that uh, acne is not treatable and nowadays we see a lot of young children being bullied at their schools or colleges uh, for the acne lesions it's it's a simple thing which is treatable but i would suggest to approach a doctor earlier so that you can also prevent scarring and one thing is you have to maintain a proper facial hygiene and please stop using too much of products which are available over the counter if say example if a sunscreen or a moisturizer suits your skin be consistent with that and whenever you see a product on instagram or any other person who is using and they are recommending you don't just uh, jump to try that since something is already suiting you don't keep jumping to products and stop layering up multiple products it's a myth that a night skin care routine with a 10 step routine will give you a korean skin nothing like that a simple moisturizer and a night cream would clear your skin but then see not all products even though the product might be the best but it might not suit every skin so please uh, meet your dermatologist let them analyze your skin and let them prescribe your products which would suit your skin thank you so thank you viewers for being with us i hope today's session on uh, acne will be useful for uh, everybody who has been going through this problem or probably would also face this at some point in their time simple suggestion given by doctor can be followed please maintain hygienic uh, uh, practices and uh, yes don't forget to moisturize your skin thank you very much this is sunetra hope to see you again and we will come back with more videos on treatments related to skin hair and laser thank you very much